Have you heard that about 300 people die each year in Australia due to infections resistant to bacteria? Did you know that resistance to antibiotics occur in ocular infections as well as in systemic infections? Have you heard that patients with a bacterial corneal infection resistant to antibiotics had been usually treated with other antibiotics in the two weeks prior to presentation to the hospital? By the end of this podcast, you'll know what antimicrobial resistance is, some causes of antimicrobial resistance, and what to do to prevent antimicrobial resistance in bacterial corneal infections. First, I will give a brief introduction about antimicrobial resistance and later we're going to explore some research on antimicrobial resistance in corneal infections in Australia. I am Maria Cabrera Aguas, a researcher at the University of Sydney SafeSight Institute. Welcome to the Sydney Eye Podcast. I hope you have enjoyed our first episode on corneal infections associated with contact lenses. If you have not yet, I encourage you to listen to it as the first episode gives you an introduction to corneal infections. Today, we're going to talk about antimicrobial resistance in corneal infections, as it has become such an important issue that the World Health Organization has a global action plan to combat this resistance. But what is antimicrobial resistance? We surveyed some people with no health background about this question, and here are their answers. Let's listen. I've heard about it in the news. I think it is when the virus or bacteria creates a resistance to drugs that are supposed to kill them. When people self-medicate, it contributes to create resistance to those drugs if people take them too frequently. I've never heard the word before, but by looking at the words, I think it's something to do with um, bacteria the body develops immune system against certain bacteria so we won't get sick or it's something like when you take antibiotics and it doesn't work anymore because the body is used to a certain type of antibiotics. My understanding of antimicrobial resistance is that it is resistance by the body to some form of bacteria or it could be similar to um, antibiotic resistance as well. So I have heard of MRSA um, and other um, illnesses associated with resistance to something that could be either an antibiotic or something that's um, microbial. I haven't heard of antimicrobial resistance, but I think it refers to uh, resistance of microbes in, in the eye, which I think are some sort of um, organisms that perhaps live in your eye, like microorganisms. Um, they probably serve some sort of purpose in the eye, but I'm um, not really sure if they're a naturally occurring thing in the eye or sort of some sort of foreign invasion in the eye but I think it's a measure of uh, resistance to microbes occurring in the eye. In general, although some people have not heard the term antimicrobial, they interpreted well by saying that antimicrobial was an antibiotic. Moreover, one of the participants mentioned that she had heard about MRSA which stands for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. A MRSA infection is caused by a type of Staphylococcus aureus bacteria that becomes resistant to many antibiotics used to treat common infections. An antimicrobial is a medication used to prevent and treat infections in humans, plants, and animals. An antimicrobial can be an antibiotic used for bacterial infections. An antiviral used for viral infections, an antifungal for fungal infections, or an antiparasitic for parasitic infections. An antimicrobial is something that can treat any microbe. 
Antimicrobial resistance happens when bacteria, virus, fungi or parasites change over time and they cannot respond to medications which makes them harder or impossible to treat. Therefore, there is a risk of disease spread, severe disease and even death. And for eye infection cases, loss of sight or even the eye. So what causes antimicrobial resistance? Antimicrobial resistance occurs naturally over time, usually through genetic changes, but antibiotic use makes it worse. Bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics when they turn on certain internal resistance processes, change to protect themselves from an antibiotic, or receive resistance genes from other bacteria. Some causes are 1. Overuse of antibiotics when we use antibiotics, some bacteria die, but resistant bacteria can survive and multiply. The overuse of antibiotics makes resistant bacteria more common. The more we use antibiotics, the more chances bacteria have to become resistant to them. 2. Inappropriate prescribing. Studies in the United States have reported a treatment indication, choice of medication, or duration of antibiotic therapy was incorrect in 30 to 50 percent of patients in 2014. Moreover, in Australia in the same year, a study showed that half of general practitioners prescribed antibiotics for upper respiratory tract infections to meet patients' expectations. That is, patients seeing a general practitioner often expect them to prescribe antibiotics. In fact, a survey showed that one in five patients would, would ask the doctor to prescribe antibiotics. Incorrectly prescribed antibiotics promote antibiotic resistance by supporting genetic alterations in the bacteria. 3. Poor hygiene and poor infection prevention and control. This can provide more opportunity for resistant bacteria to spread and make more people sick increasing the need for antibiotics. Hand hygiene is the most important way of preventing the spread of infections. Antimicrobial resistance is a health threat worldwide as having a significant potential impact on treatment outcomes. In the United States, resistant infections cause about 23,000 deaths and more than 2 million illnesses annually with cost of 35 billion American dollars. Similarly, 25,000 deaths per year related to resistant infections occur in Europe. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development estimated that an average of 290 deaths each year in Australia is caused by eight resistant bacteria and that the cost to the health systems of Australia, the United States and Canada combined will be of 74 billion American dollars between 2015 and 2050 from such resistance. A bacterial coronal infection is an ocular emergency needing an immediate and effective antibiotic therapy as it can progress very rapidly, causing visual impairment and potentially blindness. Symptoms of a coronal infection include a red and sore eye, blurring vision, sensitivity to light, tearing or discharge. You can also see an ulcer, which may look like a white spot on your cornea. There are significant collateral costs of this infection. For example, a reduced quality of life for those affected and an increased health system burden. Therefore, there is a need to undertake antimicrobial resistance surveillance to determine the suitability of the initial antibiotic therapy for bacterial coronal infections given the challenge of organisms becoming resistant to antibiotics. Surveillance programs for antimicrobial resistance were recommended by the World Health Organization Global Action Plan to support disease prevention and control strategies. These strategies include evidence-based antibiotic prescribing guidelines based on local and regional data. In Australia, there were such programs for systemic infections, but not for ocular infections. At the Sydney Eye Hospital, 
we created a surveillance program in collaboration with New South Wales Health Pathology to monitor the antimicrobial resistance in bacterial colon infections in this hospital in 2016. More on the results of the antimicrobial resistance surveillance program up next. But first, we have a question for you, the listeners. Have you had a corneal infection before? If so, how was your treatment? Were you treated as an outpatient or admitted in a hospital? What antibiotics were you prescribed? Email us at seedipodcast at gmail.com or share on Twitter with the hashtag seedipod. That's hashtag S-Y-D-E-Y-E-P-O-D. Now, more on the research of antimicrobial resistance and surveillance programs. To find the organism causing a corneal infection, a corneal scraping is performed. This involves scraping the ulcer to get a sample which is sent to the lab for culture, to grow the causing bacteria and to determine what antibiotic is the most appropriate for the infection. The culture results are usually available within 48 hours. But as the infection may worsen very rapidly, Doctors start intensive antibiotics that are the most likely to work when the scraping is performed. The initial antibiotics can be changed when culture results are available. In Australia, the most common bacteria causing corneal infections are Staphylococci and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Staphylococci are the most common in people with dry eye or with blepharitis, which is the inflammation of the eyelids and Pseudomonas aeruginosa in contact lens waters. Our surveillance program reported in 2016 that 9 in 10 bacterial corneal infections would be covered by the current antibiotic recommendations of ciprofloxacin or ofloxacin alone or a combination of kefalotin and gentamicin. This remained stable for the years 2017 and 2018 according to our most recent report published in November 2020 in the Journal of Communicable Diseases Intelligence published by the Australian Department of Health. And what to do to prevent resistance to antibiotics? Between 2012 and 2016, we studied patients admitted at the Sydney Hospital with a bacterial corneal infection resistant to antibiotics. We found that one in two episodes had been treated with other antibiotics within the last 14 days prior to the presentation to the hospital, and the duration of the symptoms was between 3 to 8 days. These patients were more likely to have poor vision after the resolution of the infection, delay in the healing of the ulcer, and perforation of the cornea needing a corneal transplantation. It is also important to highlight that the antibiotic called chloramphenicol, commercially known as Chlorzig, has been widely accessible to the public without a prescription since 2010 in Australia. This antibiotic kills a wide range of bacteria, but does not have any use for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Remember that Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the most common cause of corneal infection in contact lens wearers. After this change in 2010, there was a sudden rise in sales of this product to 600,000 additional units in the following year. This suggested that the rise in use of Chlorzig was due to recommendations by pharmacists or optometrists. Poor outcomes such as loss of the eye and lifelong reduced vision from corneal scarring have been reported due to inappropriate Chlorzig use which delayed diagnosis and early management. Therefore, as a patient you can do these three things to avoid having a corneal infection resistant to antibiotics. 1. You must see an eye doctor immediately after the onset of symptoms. The eye doctor will perform a corneal scrape and will start appropriate antibiotics. Do not self-treat with over-the-counter antibiotics such as Chlorzig as it may not work for the bacteria causing the infection. Inappropriate antibiotic therapy may cause serious complications, for example, need of corneal transplantation or even loss of your eye. 2. 
Finish the entire course of antibiotics so they can be fully effective and not promote antibiotic resistance. And three, practice good hand washing to prevent infection, especially from contact lens wear. In summary, antimicrobial resistance happens when bacteria, virus, fungi, or parasites develop resistance to antibiotics that were commonly used to treat them. Some causes of antimicrobial resistance are overuse of antibiotics, incorrect antibiotic prescribing by clinicians, and lack of hygiene and infection control. The World Health Organization has recommended surveillance programs to monitor antimicrobial resistance. In Australia, there were surveillance programs for systemic infections, but not for ocular infections. At the Sydney Eye Hospital, we established a surveillance program in 2016, which has reported that most of the patients with bacterial coronal infections are still susceptible to the most common antibiotics. In our study, patients with a coronal infection resistant to antibiotics received antibiotics during the last two weeks prior to presentation and presented to the hospital between three to eight days after the symptoms started. To prevent a coronal infection resistant to antibiotics, please seek an eye doctor as soon as possible to get checked. Do not self-treat with over-the-counter antibiotics such as Chlorosic. Finish your course of antibiotics and practice good hand washing. I'm Maria Cabrera Aguas. Thanks for joining me today in the second episode of the Sydney Eye Podcast. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please send them to sidipodcast at gmail.com and connect with us on Twitter at Cabrera Marie. It's C-A-B-R-E-R-A-M-A-R-I-E or at Corneal Research using the hashtag S-Y-D-E-Y-E-P-O-D. Until next time, bye!